Hi everyone. Recently we got a question related to Promptify and you know GPT-3 on our Discord channel. Though I had heard about Promptify, but I had never used it. So I thought of exploring it. This is nothing but a library, you know, which helps us to write a you know, better GPT-3 prompt. So a lot of people actually struggled with, you know, writing the good prompt for let's say GPT-3 or the large language models, right? And they will, you know, message me and saying that, hey, I'm using GPT-3, but I'm not able to get, you know, the desired output I want. Even I'm giving an example, you know, I'm not getting good results. So I thought of exploring this library and uh, I found it really interesting. You could solve, you know, a lot of natural language processing tasks using this library called a Promptify. And I thought of, you know, uh, let's try hands on and show you, you know, how to use this particular library. And... Um, you know, there are a lot of examples uh, already there and I'm just going to use, you know, most of the examples that I'm going to show you actually, you know, I have taken from this particular notebooks. You can go and explore more about it. Okay. So rather than wasting time, let's uh, do some hands on and see how we can use this particular library. So uh, let's say the first thing we want to install a Promptify using just a pip install and then we uh, need to import a couple of uh, modules, right? And so we get uh, a OpenAI object and let's say we have a prompter kind of an object. Then we need to have our, uh, let's say, API key because we're going to use, let's say, OpenAI API or we're going to create, let's say, GPT-3 related application, right? So how, uh, you know, we can use it the first thing, right? So we have, we take the OpenAI instance and object and pass our API key so that we get the OpenAI model. And then you pass that model to the prompter instance, right? And then this prompter instance, we can use, uh, you know, uh, solve our different uh, NLP problem. So let's, uh, you know, take this particular example. So let me clear the if any output uh, I have so that you know we can uh, see in a good way. So let me you know uh, again run it and uh, show you you know. Okay, the open AI object is not defined because I haven't run this particular cell. So let's run this both the cell and then we will see how you know. So currently we are nothing just in a instantiating let's say those two objects and I have you know some sample sentence again I have taken from that same notebook which is related to some patient. Uh, and you know we talk about some patient history what disease they have and something like that right that's what this particular statement so definitely it is related to the medical or clinical related thing so the let's perform our first task how can we use this particular library promptify and let's say do a name entity recognition as a zero shot example means what we are not giving any example to it we are just asking it to do something for us right so what we need to do so this prompter object that what we had we call it a fit method right and we see what kind of task we want to perform we want to perform the NER task right and then we can give some domain for example like we know that this is the task that we are performing the text is related to it's the medical or clinical so you can mention that particular thing here and then the input text for which we actually want to let's say find entities right and let's run this thing and see what kind of entities we can get without even mentioning let's say the type of entities we want we are not giving any example nothing we are just telling i have some medical text now find some entities for us so let's see what's happened and we will see what kind of entities it is able to you know uh, figure it out for us okay so you could see uh, it has come up with a lot of entities right so this is this is what it found so it is saying that the 93 year old which is something mentioned here is actually of type age okay then uh, some kind of you know uh, there is a chronic hip pain or something and then it is say it is a medical condition you see it is able to extract a lot of things like this is something related to depression is like a medical condition right all these things even without giving any uh, example you could do this thing actually writing prompt also but again you need to you know uh, you, you are not sure whether you can get all of these things uh, as a gpt3 output and you can definitely try right so it is for you now let's take an example it need not to be let's say something related to medical what they have predefined specified so i tried my own example so what i did i just copied some text related to let's say a mobile phone so i just searched something readme and i you know i copied i think this particular uh, thing and let's see if you want to do on that particular text which is related to readme mobile or something now here i put a domain let's say mobile phone but this is so this i think this is related to let's say mobile phone so you can try your own uh, you know domain thing and let's see what we will get if we try our own sentence right so you see now how, what all things it has found. First of all, it says that Redmi is a brand. That is a good thing, right? And then it says that the Note 12 5G is actually some kind of a model. That is also true. This is type of a processor. This is related to charging. This is, you know, a lot of things related to the camera. This is a display. I think it is really good. You see, it has able to find design. Now I wonder, what if I take the same you know, thing and try myself in a playground? What kind of output I will get, right? So I tried that same example here. Now, I, I did a simple prompt, like I have a text and then I simply say that, hey, extract entities in a key value pair from above, mo sorry, above 
mobile phone text. So I also mentioned what is my domain of that particular text and see what it found. It also did a good job actually, chipset, uh, camera it found, display it found, design, refresh rate is something I'm not sure whether we got there. Uh, the connectivity it has found, something related to 5G. And what we found here, here I think this two thing is impressive that the brand and the model is separated that I found interesting. Uh, refresh rate, I think this is related to, again, yeah, this is network and what this is related to connectivity. I think pretty good, but I would say this has performed actually better job in both the cases, right? We didn't give an example. We only give the text that we want to, you know, find entities from, and then we simply mention the domain kind of thing. What if I just mention mobile instead of mobile phone? Uh, did it going to change anything for us? Let's see. And so you can try yourself, you know, and I would say you compare both the way. You go to the playground and see where you can get the better result, right? If you could see the promptify is actually going to, you know, help you something. So now it's say something got changed. The Redmi Note 5G, everything is called as a device and that brand and this thing. So maybe there is some variability. Again, these are generative model, right? But I would still urge you to try. I do find, you know, uh, this particular uh, particular what I say, the library is definitely helping you without worrying about how to write the good prompt and all this thing, right? Now you might say that okay, this is good, uh, you know. But what if I have my own custom entities? How do I do that kind of stuff, right? So this is the example. What if you have your own custom entities? So you could see here we have a we had a labels which is uh, you know none. But you actually can provide the list of labels and nothing but the entity type that you care about, right? And and you only want to find uh, those entity types from it. So that is also now uh, you could do. Okay, let's see whether it is able to find only the, let's say, symptom and this is now it is saying. So it is able to find those symptoms and that this is what we had in our earlier text, which is nothing related, to, uh, which is nothing but the patient and their medical history, right? Now what, so this is what, nothing, this is something, let's say, a zero shot, you know, uh, example without giving any labels. This is something zero shot with our own custom labels. Now this is, let's say, one shot example because we want to give a one example. The syntax for that become you need to write a text you know from which you want to extract and then you give uh, that particular example the expected list of entities right so you see this is the list of entities for this particular text that we want to provide as an example so what is one entity one entity is nothing but the entity type and then its actual value that's what it is this right this is the this is and seems to be this is the name of the this is right and we do the same thing so we can add one more thing called examples which uh, we didn't have here right so here we add up one more thing called examples, which is nothing but again the list of examples you can add. And let's run through it. And you know, it let's say whether this example is going to be useful here or not, but this is how actually you could provide a example to uh, let's say this particular promptify library. And you could see it is now again I what I see here, you see this E and W and all these things. I think these are just convention. Instead of W, if you put something else, it should be uh, still working. So where is find and replace? Yeah, here it is, right? And let's say we want to replace this W with, uh, with T because we see a lot of places they are using this T, right? And let's say replace all. Now we have T here and then we run the same thing. See what we had something like cronies, osteoporosis, hypertension. Let's run it again and see we get a similar thing here. Okay, so we got again you see we still got those same results right so you can always play around it you modify something you know don't take it anything for granted just you know uh, play around it and see uh, what can you do with this particular library so this was the example of what uh, i think you know uh, one shot example right now let's take an example of let's say question answering right so okay let me save this thing okay uh, what we were doing? Uh, yeah, we want to try the question answering thing, right? So just like NER, now we can try QA, a question answering kind of thing. And let's use the same sentence what we had, which is related to some patient problem, right? And uh, let's say we want to ask, what is the main problem with the patient in that particular, let's say, example? And let's see what answer we got. Or should we read first what exactly that text so that we could judge whether it is good. So this patient is the 93 old, for, uh, you know, old female patient. They have some chronic hip pain, all of this thing, you know. some nausea and omitting and something related. Okay, there are a lot of things with the patient. Let's go and, you know, uh, see what answer uh, we got. What is the main problem with the patient? Yeah, that omitting and this particular thing, which is actually, you know, mentioned at the end of this particular thing, right? That is correct. The last step we have is, let's say, question answer generating. We have, let's say, one story, you know, you can call it as a fiction or a story related to, let's say, Alice and 
rabbit hole and let's say we want to generate the three questions and also we also specify it is a story or fiction or something like that and then we should see a question and answers you know uh, generated from the above context and you could see you know uh, if you want to answer this particular question uh, sorry uh, uh, this is the answer and let's say the corresponding question generated here and you can you know play around it and see whether you get meaningful question answering or not or try a different use case uh, you know what you have i hope you found you know uh, very useful let me know whether you found this library useful or not right try something here and try something in a prompt and really see whether it can you know add value i do see if you want to do something specific to a domain it could be let's say something related to even retail mobile or even this medical kind of thing using this library is going to definitely help actually okay if you uh, you know haven't uh, joined the discord channel i think you, know, you will find link on maybe you can find it community post also and you can find the link in my linkedin post also right you can use that link and join here and if you have any question related to let's say uh, related to my videos you face any issues you can come here post it here and make sure you know uh, i i try to resolve it thank you